It's early in the morning, March 20th, 2024. I just uh, took my kids to the bus. Spring, I think, is coming, although could be a false summit. The birds are squawking outside, so if you hear those. All right, I got a couple of rolls here that are mostly of my family. And right at the most common questions that I get from other photographers or right, other people about my photography, right, relate to family photography, right? They see pictures of my, my kids and they, they're interested in, in what I do and maybe trying to, um, you know, follow my footsteps in some way. Right. Photographing family life, right, childhood, right, for many photographers feels like the most important thing that you do in your life. Um I can't I can't make a video, right, at least not right now, that's for people who know very little about photography. Right. I think my right, who I have in mind are these people who ask me questions, which are, you know, usually photographers that, that maybe shoot digital, maybe they have, they've even been shooting their families for a few years, and, um, right, they might have, like a Leica Q camera, or one of the Fuji X100s, or an X-Pro, or an X-T, or something, uh, or maybe a Canon, or Nikon Digital, Um, or maybe a you know an M11 or M10 something, and then they see my photos, which I shoot on film, and so you know they're interested in maybe sh shooting their family with film. And it's like I, I get a little nervous about recommending it to people because it's um, it does take a certain amount of skill and experience with working with film and film cameras uh, for, for me to just to like you know have confidence that people can just jump right into it right it's like there's a learning curve but hopefully i can assist with that and but but i'm also gonna i'm gonna pause and say i shot my family with digital cameras for four or five years and there's probably very few people on earth who have taken more photos with Fuji digital cameras than I have right and it's and I'm really thankful for all that experience and right it, I wouldn't be that terribly bummed if I had to switch over um, back to like a Fuji X100 one of you know I'd probably choose the F over the five or six, but that's for another video. Um, but there is something really great about shooting with film that, right, I'm glad I made the choice. I, um, I can say I prefer it, right? And, you know, whether it's just like returning to my roots or the nostalgia of it or right the tangibility of it um, or if it's the tones and the grain and the sharpness um, right or you know just the whole thing right the the making of it the the steps involved uh, it, it all gets wrapped up into the you know this thing we do things we make and what we enjoy so I'm gonna not go on forever I'm gonna I'm but I am sort of I'm gonna go through a couple of roles here that I shot this week and you know so it's gonna be a combination of sharing kind of what I'm doing and why you know a little bit of sort of some recommendations um, but then also like like it's a mix of my process and what I'm evaluating Sort of as I'm trying to improve what I'm doing. 
So I shot a roll of double X um, at 1250, which is a little more than two stops under exposed from box. And I shot a roll of HP5 at 2000, again, a little more than two stops under exposed from box. Um, if I made a short list of my favorite films for family photography, right, HP5 and double X are both on there. Uh, if hard pressed to pick just one, film stock right now for family life I would pick double X but I'm, I'm still giving some other films chances and I, I do enjoy playing around with different films and, I, and I'll say I'm about to go on a trip and I'm gonna I'm gonna take some color film right I think you know, I, I don't want my kids to look back on childhood and, and say dad was childhood all in black and white um, right let's get some color in there it's shoot it's springtime right um, Okay, the first first roll I'm going to share is the double X, and I shot this whole roll inside of a climbing gym. Now, this climbing gym was in an old warehouse, which had some beautiful window light. Um, you know, it took my camera not knowing, like, what's it going to be like? Is it going to be dark? Um, is it going to be bad interior lighting? And it turned out to be a really beautiful window light. So yay i'm glad i brought film i brought just one roll <laughs> um and i chose a 25 millimeter lens here because right i know with climbing the faces are mostly going to be turned away and you know if it's something like a 50 or a, a telephoto right it's you're mostly just taking the pictures of their back their back of their head and right i, I wanted more something to get more of the environment the walls the sense of climbing so I, I grabbed a 25 millimeter lens and I also pocketed a 50 just in case I was like, well, you know, just in case there's a chance for me to kind of come around the side and get their faces, you know, maybe I'll have a 50 in my pocket. So, um, right. And again, this is, <clears throat> I'm underexposing by a little more than two stops because I want that extra speed. It is still pretty dark in here. Um, and there's some action and, um, right. I want some flexibility and being able to stop down and, and kind of make everything sharp. So I wanted the extra speed and, but that's about as much speed as you can go, um, before just saying total, total goodbye to your shadows, right? 1250 is a good one. Kind of 1000, 1250 is good for like, yeah, you're saying goodbye to your shadows, but not totally. Like, you still get some tonality coming from your shadows. Um, and, it, you know, makes your highlights pop. Right. Um, I'll share my credits. Here, let me do that. I know we're anxious to kind of see the photos, but I do like sharing just this quickly through some details. Is Right. There's my two films. Uh, I home develop. So this is a 90 degree X tall for nine minutes. And this time I, I totally followed the directions from Kodak. Um, the lenses, right, 25 uh, ZM Zeiss lens. Then there's the 35 millimeter Summicron version one, uh, 50 millimeter sonar. Um, my camera, I'm shooting a, a Zeiss Icon ZM. Right? I usually shoot Leicas. Um, this is a new camera. I'm still learning it, I'm still learning the metering. Um, uh, and I didn't make some mistakes uh, on these two rolls. And, yeah. Then this is mostly my kids around the house and the yard at a climbing gym. This is March 11th, 2024. Uh, here's my scanner set up. Right, like SL2S with a Sigma 70 millimeter macro at 6.3 and a Veloy Easy 35. Uh, which basically, like, I'm sort of benchmarking against, like, a Noritsu scanner. Um, and just kind of making sure that I'm in the neighborhood and on par with sort of what, what I'd be getting if I was going through an, a good lab. Uh, and then Capture One 21 for editing. Okay. Yeah, right. The, um, I'll, I'll just move on since we've already sort of talked about that photo. Um. You know, here I'm, I've come around, right? I'm trying to get him a little bit. And I'm also hoping, this is my wife, I'm hoping to get her to look. And she doesn't. 
<laughs> but he does look at me, right? And even kind of expecting me to take his picture. Um, so I do. You know, he, he has a nice, sweet expression there. You know, almost all of my photography of my kids is them in action. Um, right, this goes back to my time as a, as a, I taught for 10 years. I took lots of pictures of kids in my classroom. Right, I worked with high school kids mostly. And I wanted them in action, and I wanted them deeply engaged in something, so much so that I could really get close, and they were not aware that I was photographing them, right? I didn't want, to, I didn't want these, like, everybody look here, smile pictures. I wanted um, to really capture, right, where deeply engaged, attention-driven activities. Um, this one, this one actually... Um, Spend a little more time with it now than I did when I was scanning and editing. Um, I really like sort of the, right, it's it kind of interesting how his face is totally not dark. I think there's a little bit of reflection off the wall to light his face, right? But this sort of body posture and the lighting here uh, looks really good. And, right, here's Mama Bear, um, you know, kind of giving him a little, maybe a little guidance or just kind of watching his technique. Um, she's probably also kind of wondering if she's in the photograph or not. Um, right. You would think, you know, with this, um, you know, this kind of underexposure and a big push, would maybe you, we'd be risking some ugly grain. Um, but that is just not the case with double X, right? This looks really good, right? And it's this like textured grain, um, Right, which varies on context and exposure and development, uh, which helps give photos like a right a. Uh, I wish I had a better word. Is it a texture, a dimension, right? That um, right is one reason I really like shooting film. And yeah, there's ways to fake it with software, but you know it's a little bit like well, I'm not gonna use. <laughs> never mind. Not gonna go with that metaphor. A little inappropriate. This is YouTube. Okay. These are my two boys, George and Ellery. And I just wanted, like, yeah, they're looking away from me, but it's definitely showing, right, they're together in sort of the cool the cool light here. Um, you know, some of you might be saying, well, yeah, it's like this guy's just using cool light in a climbing gym. But that's sort of like... The key, right, is the key is seeing, finding um, great opportunities for beautiful light. And right, either your family goes there on their own volition or you encourage them to go to these places with beautiful lighting. Um, my cat says hi. Right. And right, having an eye for like, ooh, this is this lighting is really great. Like, I'm going to get some family photos. Um, this was, I'm, I am still learning the metering on my camera, and this one I can tell is a little bit more underexposed than I want, and I say that because the grain is, the grain has gone from sort of beautiful to a little too much, um, but his posture, right, makes this photo, right, the, the way his arms and his legs have angles and this cool rock he's holding on to right and I'm just kind of using the, the, the tonality across the, the rock now this one sort of reminds me of that book Blueberries for Sal where there's like the bears and the the mom and the kid going up different sides of the mountain. So here's George up here. He's climbing up to get that little clover tape. And then Ellery on this side, who's doing the same thing. He's climbing up. They're, they're playing a game. And it's sort of weird to, like, not put either of them in the middle of the photograph, right? <laughs> um... 
but oh I just thought of something back on this photo right one reason I sort of miss this exposure I didn't miss it by a lot is because I'm right it's a new camera and I'm used to Leica cameras that meter very much just like in the center like a large spot in the middle and um, the Zeiss is more sensitive to this light around the edges. Um, I don't want to go into a lot of detail about how it meters, but basically all this brightness on the left side uh, through threw off the, the, the meter in a way that I didn't compensate for. Right, I say that because like understanding, understanding how your camera meters is really essential and I think when I when I look at other people's family photos on film, I do see a lot of underexposed photographs because of you know people who just sort of trust their meter but don't quite understand when to override a suggestion, right? Uh, okay, here. Now, what I noticed about this scene was how beautiful this window light was coming across. And there was almost no light down here, so I saw that as an opportunity for shadows to disappear. And, right, so, right, I metered, right, more this spot. And, um, and then I actually asked my kids to, um, I mean, I kind of knew that they were going to come because that was what you do, right, is you climb the wall and then you come down the slide. So, you know, I, I waited, right? I saw my kid coming. And I was a little sneaky about it. I don't know that he was, if he knew I was getting his photo, right? And I'd already pre-focused, right? I, I focused right here on the corner of the slide. Um, they were sitting in a circle and they were counting their stickers to see sort of who had got the most. And I knew my son Ellery had had a ton of stickers, right? Look at all of the stickers down here. And he's peeling them off. And I got lucky that he sat down in the big splotch of sunlight. I took two. I, I sort of I brought this other adult figure in who I thought sort of had some interesting, in, interesting character to his appearance, um, and I liked Ellery, Ellery's hand posturing, and you know George is counting his stickers too. And again, that I like that twenty-five millimeter lens here. Right, the wide angle like lets you get close. Right, there's sort of a right. Often when your kids, especially when they're young, is you need wide angle because you got to be really close to your kid, um, for usually for safety. And so something like 35, 28, 25, 24, right, are good focal lengths for when you have young children. My wife wasn't feeling that photogenic, so I sort of had to ask her, and I found a place where the light was a real strong cross lighting, and asked her to, you know, pose. Um, I think I, I sort of like, I pushed this film super hard, and she ended up a little overexposed. So there's there is quite a bit of grain on her face, and she's like, Daniel, don't zoom in like that, please. <laughs> um, it turned out pretty good. It turned out pretty good. But again, that's like me seeing, right? I'm like, ooh, that's nice light. And then I move somebody into the light. Now, this one was, um, right, I metered to sort of like off the ground here. And um, ended up meaning I needed a, a slow shutter. And right, you can see I have motion blur. But I think it's awesome. And... Like what I'm photographing is this is my son George and I loved how he was doing his hands and his feet like that. Um, and I just had him framed 
nicely. So I took the shot and as you know, so it works as part of the series, right? It doesn't work as maybe a, an image by itself. Now, Ellery's doing something he's not supposed to do, which is jump down. And he knows that. He's very good at falling back and rolling. So I'm not quite sure what was going on here. This is not a, it's not a big jump. But, um, you know, of course, I like the action of it. Especially because now that he's turned around, I get his face. Um, yeah, so this was actually, I was actually taking a picture of Ellery, and, you know, and I'm sort of incorporating all of these, right, this environment, and then George runs into the scene, so I back up a little bit more, and you can tell that I'm actually still focused on Ellery, um, but I, I love when George enters the picture and wants to be part of it, so... And here's another one where, right, I'm sort of not knowing my camera well enough yet. Uh, this window light threw my meter off, and um, I'm pretty far under. You know, I go through different phases where, like, I'll have phases where I'm, I'm metering by eye, and I'm just sort of thinking about what the light is and setting shutter speed and aperture, right, just totally just out of my own brain. Um, and then there's other times where I'm sort of kind of more spot metering. Um, but this time I'm, 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 I'm taking advantage of this new camera that has um, right, automatic exposure where I can choose the aperture and it'll set the shutter speed. Um, but you still have to know, you know how to meter and, and there's an exposure lock on it that I'm, uh, is in a terrible location, but it's still it's still still pretty handy but basically the window light was overwhelmed overwhelmed it and um, ended up being a little dark but guess what it actually looks pretty good right it, it, it adds that contrast to his legs um, it really makes his feet and legs pop yeah I've lost his face entirely um, but I sort of like how much the shadow got you know the shadows back here got lost um, and the contrast looks good so still a keeper you know this is just it's mo almost more about all the different handholds as it is about my son now here I'm right it's a it's a he's going up a crack and so I'm taking advantage of this wall that I can get up against to sort of add some right some foreground right with a, a wide angle lens and I'm trying to think I mean I I don't think I edited much to this right yeah I didn't right it's not like I came in here and made this darker this is just a natural light this is just what's happening in the climbing gym now this might actually be my favorite shot on the roll um, right this is Ellery and George and they're they're doing a test to see if they're too close to each other or not there's sort of a rule that right if you both reach out you shouldn't be able to touch each other um but they're being very sweet with it it was sort of like you know sort of this playful thing that they were doing and um right and so now let's talk about the film for a second right not only do the tones look amazing um in my eye is but look at all this glow now a lot of people might think that that's the lens, right? I shoot a lot of vintage lenses that would just by themselves produce that much glow. But this is just the film and and specifically double X, right? It has, this is halation, right? We have a lot of light coming right next to a shadow where that light spills over, right? It, it, it's, um, right, the light is bouncing around inside the emulsion Right, or it bounces off the back. So there's there's two different sources. One's not technically halation, but it's basically the same thing. 
Uh, and I freaking love it, right? A lot of films try to get rid of that look. Um, but right in the right sub, in the right context, it can be beautiful. Okay. I like this one because George is climbing over. And also I, I like this girl's pose and sort of the way her face sort of came in too. So that's not my child, right? So it's like um, for that reason, you know, it's, it's not my favorite favorite, but sort of just like as a photo for other people who don't know these kids, right? I think it's a, it's a, it's a pretty, good, um, pretty good shot. And then I did ask Ellery if he was like, do you mind if I take your picture? And I'll say that this was actually the place in the gym where I thought the light was the best. And I wanted my kids <laughs> to come over here. And um, if you're a climber, you can tell this is about as easy as climbs get. Uh, and it's basically where they start, you know, very beginners. And so I had to, I had to kind of trick my kids into coming over here. And I talked with... Um, one of the climbers that worked there and he, he had this idea. He was like, Oh yeah, you can, you know, have, have them climb without their hands, right? Just tr use your feet. And so that brought Ellery over to this section where the light was the best. And I was right. <laughs> um, right. And, and how do I know that? Right. It's like, it's, um, it's a directional light. Um, there's some shadows, but they're not super hard. Um, right, it's a light that comes across the surface, um, and yeah, I don't know, I don't know how else to explain it other than I just have an eye for it now, and um, and then I freaking love the shot. Right, it's like he's there on his feet, balancing right his arms and his hands, the way that you know they have those curves, and then the you know the the look on his face of how he's um, determined. But also like whoa. So this was a real winner, for, a real winner out of out of the set. And I like this one too, um, especially because now that he's up high enough, where his face really got a lot of light. So I don't know. I think I had a. I'm gonna have a hard time picking from those two. I sort of like the right the arm the arms going on here. Right, there's, there's sometimes always a feeling like you've got to pick one, but part of family photography, right, is like we take a lot of pictures and we want to tell a story. So um, this one, I think, you know, I, I was excited to have right sort of this like. I don't want to call it a beetle shot, right? But it's that like somebody in the front, in the middle, in the back, right? And sort of these interesting postures of the body. Uh, and again, I got lucky with this beautiful cross lighting. And this is the birthday boy up here. So we're at a birthday party. And so I'm glad to have a picture of uh, my boys with the birthday boy. All right, so now I've, I have switched over to the the sonar, the 50 millimeter, and it's because this was the kind of the opportunity I was looking for, is they made an obstacle course, so now I've got a chance to kind of get more of their faces. Um, so here's George coming through the hula hoop, and then I got one of Ellery coming through the hula hoop. And then I switched back. That was it. That's all I used the 54. Um, this is another one where my, my camera failed me, right? I'm going to have to get better at, at metering. Um, it's underexposed. And I can see that because, like, the shadows, it's just like, yeah, there's some tones there, but it's just sort of struggling to get separated tones. All right. This was, all, I mean, I almost threw this one out, but this was a good example of I, I was manually, I had set my camera manually for a previous shot, and then I forgot when I came over here. And this is actually like three or four stops underexposed and from what I was trying to do. So probably five stops underexposed, maybe more. So 
you know, this is essentially like shooting double X at like 6,400. Um, and yeah, so it's very grainy and contrasty. But I left it in there, right? Just because kind of to show like very badly <laughs> underexposed. But, you know, you still got something there. Um, this was, you know, after I realized my mistake, I switched over and, right, this is back to 1250. And um, I like this shot because it's actually the last shot on the roll. And because I bulk, bulk load my film, sometimes my last frame has a little bit of light exposure to it. Right, I, I, I bulk, bulk load in the daylight. Um, but I love how the I, I brought this, the ceiling into this, right, this wood ceiling. And it really gives a sense of, like, how he's climbing up and over something. Um, so I'm really glad. I was actually, I took this one, was sad that, um, like, as soon as I realized I had goofed, I was like, oh, I really wanted that shot. But guess what? He did the climb again. Right. So I got another chance. <laughs> um, okay. All right, I'm seeing how I'm kind of going slow and the time is really ticking. So I am going to switch over to the HP5 roll. And um, but I do want to get through another roll because I think it's important to sort of see one film stock and then, then the other. And, you know, kind of helps you decide maybe which one you like or how they're different. So... Um, and, and a scene change here, too. So unfortunately, I don't have HP5 in, in the same climbing gym, although you're probably tired of looking at climbing gym photos. Um, but this is HP5 at 2,000. And what's nice about that much speed, right, is I'm. this is an indoor shot. Um, right, The only light in this room is window light. And so this backside of the couch is in pretty deep darkness. And so... You know, the speed does come in handy. Um, so that's kind of why I keep shooting some HP5. It's kind of like, well, you know, if there's really extra speed there, like that's that's worth investigating. Um, now, now though, I'm on a, I'm on a 35 millimeter lens, so I've switched over to like my 1960s Summicron. Right, what's going on here is this is the very first shot on the roll. Um, and so there's a little bit of light piping down the roll. Which almost always works out. Um, but I love how his hand is up, right? This sense of action and George is coming in with the pillow to give him a good smack. Right, it's a pillow fight, right? I'm photographing a pillow fight. Um, and this is not usually the room where I take a lot of pictures of my kids, um, right? I have other, another room in my house that has much better window light, right? And for, for my indoor family life photos, like I'm mostly using window light 99% of the time, right? And I know my house very well of where the window light is best and what times of the day it is best, right? And that's when my camera comes out, um, Right, and I'm also been pretty intentional about like the places in my house where the light is the best are places where the kids can be. Um, I love how the the sun was coming through here, and you know it's tempting to want to go around to the other side and like shoot them with the sun shining on them. Um, it's it's a little more risky just to to go with backlighting. Um, but it also, it's like when it works out, it's, it's, you know, it's really awesome, right? Um, and I will say that like this vintage lens actually leads to a little bit of glowing and bringing this light around his face and actually lifts his face a little bit compared to a modern lens with a, a new coating. But you kind of see here, right? This is the same sort of like that gone, maybe I don't want to say bad, but right, there's so much glow from the lens and from the film where like his face is, is, is gone. There's no, there's no detail there. Um, but that's kind of fine, right? It's like as a set of images, right? I just love that I got the pillow, right? This Pikachu pillow and he's chasing his brother around the corner. And now, and also I love his foot right here, right? And 
you know, note that like all this is manual focus. And that's one of the scariest things about switching over from like, you know, like an X106 or something is like, whoa, autofocus, like I don't have it, manual focus, how do I do that on action shots? And so like I'm focused on the couch, right? So I, I'm anticipating this activity and I've focused on the edge of the couch, right? And I'm sort of waiting for him to enter in, you know, to come into the scene. All right, this is probably f2.8 or so. Now, the light is not as nice on this side of the room, but I really liked how he was sort of waiting for the pillow fight, right? He's like, come on, come to me. Um, and there was enough light coming in. There's actually a window on his right, too. You can kind of tell that he's lit up on this side. And I'm, I was careful to frame his, his him uh, in the window, right? So... I didn't want like a, I didn't want the edge of the window to be going through his face. Oh, this point not a big deal really. Always got to get a shot of my cats. The, I will say though that like, at this point I'm starting to. You know, be sad that I wasn't shooting double X. I'm starting to I don't know, exactly what. You know, I like this, but like HP five has it's like. I mean, I will, I think I'm going to continue to perfect my development of it. I think this was 90 degrees. I think I'm going to maybe try 85. Somehow the grain becomes less like dimensional um, and sort of giving things like shape and more just sort of like a lot of grain everywhere. Um, and sort of like where there is grain is sort of not the tones where I necessarily want it. So... I don't know. I'm, I have way more experience with double X than HP five. Um, but it still looks good. And it, oh, this was an exciting moment because these cats are still sort of get, learning to like each other, and this was kind of the closest that they had been, just hanging out. I will say though, I'm, I'm annoyed by myself for leaving this uh, drawstring for the blinds in the photo right typically I would have an eye for that and I would pull it out of the way now my son George didn't want to be photographed at this moment um, so instead I was like well let me get the hoverboard and so I focused down here on the floor right meter down here on the floor and sort of just kind of as he was coming around the corner just got him on his hoverboard and sort of just kind of you know I'm noticing that like there's a lot here that'll add um, nice tones. Now, some might just see my house and say like, oh, this, this guy's got a lot of things that show up well in black and white photography. Well, that's intentional on my part, right? It's like I bought a house with good light. I bought a house that would be interesting in good lighting. I put things in my house that will be, have nice tonality, right? It's, um, Right, it's 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 not an accident. Right, um, I loved how Amos's little feet were were pointed up like this. Um, you know, and he was showing me his belly. Yeah, and this looks pr plenty good. Um, right, I do like the grain here. I like I like the image. It's not. It's always hard to judge. It's like that doesn't seem as sharp as double X. Um, but it's, you know, it's, those are always hard to, it's hard to compare. Um, Amos is like his little tail swooping. And, you know, I saw the light here, right? I keep my cameras, I keep my cameras handy, right? I, I usually carry, I usually have two cameras loaded with film at all times. Um, Right, two different film stocks, so I can have some choice, and maybe, maybe usually two black and white, but sometimes a black and white and a color. Uh, and I keep them around the house, right? I keep them on a table or on the fireplace or you know, somewhere safe where I don't have to worry about the cats or kids bonking it. Um, but right when something like this happens, and I, I, I didn't wasn't planning on my cat coming by the window, right? I want to be quick to be able to just go grab it and take a shot and then put it right back. 
now this this photo is sort of funny this is the um i want to say it's the sumacron at 2.8 but you know i also have a sumalux from the 60s and there's a chance that maybe i put that one on for this shot it's sort of what the background looks like um my son here was he's playing video games after school and whenever i take shots of him playing video games after school he has he usually has this like face that he he doesn't like you know it's it's just like this face of intent video gameness and so he was like i'm gonna smile for this one <laughs> um and it is it's a cute smile it's like this like you know he want he's wanting but it's it's like him wanting to show that like he's happy right playing video games <laughs> and he is you know it's not it's not fake <sighs> yeah um, you know, my wife does, I, I do like to get pictures right around the house of right, little, little things that are, you know, show the time of, well, my wife made this little, what do you call that? A garland, right? And she painted the fire, the painted this white and she put up the lights and she, I mean, so I'm, I, what I'm doing here is, you know, capturing sort of these little things that my wife has done to make the, the house nice. And this is her again. She put the, you know, she's watering the plant here. Um, another good example of like, I just, you know, wander upon the scene. And I'm like, well, where's my camera? <laughs> um, and, you know, you can tell I'm, I'm, my composition here is like, I'm, I'm trying to bring in these, these things around the edges that I know will have good tonality and pattern and, um, And yeah, there's a skylight above the bathtub. And again, right, that's like, right, when you're a photographer picking out a house, like you, you think about, it's like, do I care that the ceilings are not eight or under eight feet? Or do I care about that there's a skylight? Right. Uh, my kids were working on traps to catch leprechauns. And, um, you know, like this, this little scene of where they've, they're doing their construction work uh, again this was a mis mismetering right this this specular reflections off of this um, little pizza pizza top pot pizza pie tin um, through my through my meter um, so as much as I like my Zeiss icon I, I am still sort of you know and it's been years since I've switched switched to a camera a different a non Leica um, so I'm having to having to learn how to beat her with a new camera. I can tell this one's underexposed compared to what I was going for because it's like extra grainy, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like I sort of like it, but I, I I would I would know that if I showed this to my wife, you know, she'd be like, "Ugh, it's, it's awfully grainy," you know. But and again, like this is that HP five look where like there's just so much sort of. Um, it's almost like it's been developed in Rodinal where it's like kind of everything is grainy instead of sort of only, you know, things being a little more about, well, what was sharp and what was, what was the exposure? What was the development? And you get a lot of like life to the variety of grain. Um, that's sort of true here. Right. And again, I'm going to try to maybe dial back the development just a little bit or choose a different developer, right? Um, those things can it's not always just the film my cat right i just like to kind of you know there's i noticed there was some some different patterns here with the sunlight and my cat re relaxing now i love this photo and i don't i love it because my son put these little shamrocks on the windows and I had him run out there, and, and he had fun with taking this picture. Um, and I, I just, you know, it's a good shot of my son. But it's sort of a place where black and white sort of failed me, or I needed to work a little harder to make sure that the shamrocks didn't disappear. Um, right, I could have could have changed maybe where I was standing to make sure, like, I got more shamrocks that looked like this one. Um, or this one that his hand is on is pretty cool. 
but um you know i'm also waiting like he's sort of moving around out here but i noticed that there's sort of a varying amount of light on his face and i am waiting for that moment where right there's just enough light on his face where i can tell like he'll be a mid-tone and i can i'll be able to see his face now my cat goldie was doing this really cute thing with her paws and i wanted to get it this is the sumacron at 2.8 um it's sort of like i love the picture i love her expression and it's a keeper but right this this type of like want the background to fade away with a little more sense of modern sensibilities right i, I should have had the Lasuma lux handy but whatever it's still it's still good it's still good um and again, like I, I took a couple of her here. I actually like this one with her eyes closed, a little more of like that cute little face. Um, and I, you know, again, this kind of cool vintage uh, background bokeh. Uh, oh, and I actually opened this. This was an F2 shot. I sort of got, I usually don't use that aperture on, on this lens because um, it kind of becomes sort of lack of contrast here in the middle but I went for it and it still worked out all right so here uh, a quick little a quick little action scene right and my kids are pushing each other in this um, rolling cart and it's they're having a lot of fun right and I'm using a manual focus lens at 2.8 so what I've done is I've focused here on the deck right here, right? I've also metered on the deck right here. And I'm letting them just sort of go back and forth. And I'm letting, you know, I'm waiting for them to enter the, fo the focal plane. You know, and I've, I've chosen my aperture. I mean, I've cho chosen a shutter that's like, I don't know if it was 160th or one, one over 125, right? I want to freeze them, but I also don't mind a little bit of motion, right? Right, there's some places where you can see like there's some motion here and then i just shot a bunch and i, I couldn't pick a favorite um and i'm just gonna let them live as a series here you know but george is having the time of his life he absolutely loved this you know and they were taking turns of who was pushing who so that's the nice thing about the series, right, is I get to show that sort of back and forth of them taking turns. And this is one where I'm, I'm, I do wish that I'd switched to the Sumalux. This is the Sumacron again. It's still pretty good. It's still pretty good. And I kind of wish I was shooting double X. <laughs> so. mm. There's always this, this like, I'll show a couple, a couple more things about what I'm paying attention to is I don't, I don't want there to be, I'm paying a lot of attention. There's a lot of background objects that can become problematic, right? So I am paying some attention to trying to frame where background things aren't going through heads, right? And this this one's like I knew that pole, right? It's like I'm trying to not put that pole in the middle of their heads, but I sort of failed there, um, right? That posts in the background, the goal, the stairs, right? All of this is like I'm, I'm I am aware of it as I'm as I'm taking these shots, and I'm trying the best I can to like not put an object right too close to their faces or in behind right behind their heads. Okay, last shot. Um, it's not even a family photo shot, but it was last shot on the roll. And um, you can see the, I, I kind of, I didn't know if these were the shamrock patterns. I sort of thought they were. Um, but this is, right, that light coming through that same window. And I just love the shadow right here, the shadow right here um, on the wall. And so, yeah. And then, yeah, let's look at HP5 on this shot. I mean, here, you know, this is pretty, this is pretty cool here. So HP5 is, is still in the game. Uh, it hasn't been knocked out. Um, 
but I'm going to have to fine tune the developing. Now I do all my home development and I'm going to keep it that way. I like to play around with different developers and right, sort of have all the different variables in my control. Um, but right, uh, double X and HP5, like if you're just curious, you can send both those to pretty much any, any film lab that offers black and white development. Um, let's see some closing thoughts and maybe I'll end with this photo um, I'm going to be selfish for a minute um, as I think about the coming week or two and I have a trip coming um, I definitely want to shoot more double X <laughs> as, as normal and as much as I love the Sumacron, I think I'm going to switch back over to the Sumalux for a little bit. Um, and then, yeah, I've been doing this really aggressive push in Extol, which I have a video about that if you're interested. Um, I might dial it back just a little bit and go with something more like a Right, rate it maybe 800 or 1,000. And yeah, and then I'm going to switch over to color. Geez, that's like, that's going to blow my mind. Uh, I've mostly been thinking in terms of black and white. And like, I mean, hear me say that, right? I'm thinking in terms of black and white, right? I, I do this enough where like, you know, Again, a reason I shoot film is it puts so much more of the imagining in your brain as opposed to on an EVF or on a screen. And I like it there, right? It's, it, it, it's, it engages my mind in a different, more powerful way, right? And so I've been thinking very heavily in terms of black and white, and I... Right, and I squint in order to turn my, the cones off in my eyes, and I, right, I'm paying a lot of atten attention to right tones and and kind of where sharpness will be, and sort of all the things that make a black and white photograph. And that's so different than shooting color, um, but I do think with the trip coming up, I'm going to shoot both color and black and white. So and sort of just to celebrate spring. And because I know my kids would want me to, right? So, all right, take care.